we have an electron. That electron is moving in a constant magnetic field. Let's say that at this point, that electron is moving with a velocity which is upward. The magnetic field is what direction? Um, J. The magnetic field, which is starting with the base. We'll do this. Okay. Um, into the board. You see the feathers of the arrow going into the board. What handy rule are we going to use, Jack? The right hand rule. Please get out your right hand. You are going to do what with your fingers, Aaron? Well, you're going to point them in the direction of the No, you're going to point them in the direction of Bochar? The velocity. The velocity. What are you going to do next, Abby? Oh, we're going to curl up fingers towards the electric field. No, not the electric field. The magnetic field. Approximately how far are you going to curl them? <coughs> Approximately how far? Angle. Approximately 90 degrees. Your thumb is going to point, in this particular case, to the left. This means that the magnetic force on this charge, Warwood, is what direction? To the right. To the right. Why? Because it's an electron. So, so. 180 because it's a negative charge, that force is going to be 180 degrees from the direction of our thumb. The direction of the magnetic force is going to be, in this case, to the right. Amber, describe the motion of this negatively charged particle now. What's going to happen to it? I agree with that. I'm looking for a little bit more. We determined what's going to happen to this last time. This was a, where we ended last time. Please describe the motion of this negative charge, Jack. It goes in a circle. It's going to move in a circle. We determined last time that it will move in a circle. So it's going to move in a circle like this. All right. Some information that we know, and we're going to find various other things from it. We know that the radius of the circle through which this object is moving, this electron is moving, is 10.0 centimeters. We know it's moving perpendicular to a magnetic field which has a value of 470. 470 what, Travis? 470 micro tesla. Micro tesla. We are going to figure out the speed of the electron. That's going to be part A. We're going to do parts B and C. I'll identify specifically what they are after we do part A, and so on and so forth. Miss Cell, what should we do next? I've said at this point we can do these in our head, so this should be 470 times 10 to the We know micro is times 10 to the negative centimeters. Good. We also should convert centimeters, which is that one as well. So 0 0.10 meters. Good. We have everything in standard dimensions. Matt? So we're going to make that 4.7 times 10 to the negative 8. Negative fourth. Fourth, sorry. Doesn't matter. It's the same thing. At this point, that conversion is easier to do. And so if you're giving an answer, sure, you should probably do 4 point whatever. But if we're just using it in the middle of a problem, I don't okay. have any issues. Next, Eric. We did. I should change the radius as well to um, 0 0.1, 0 meters. We got something moving in a circle. 
forward? We could sum the forces. In what direction should we sum the forces in? In we should sum the forces in the in direction because we have something moving in a circle. In the in direction, we're going to get the only force acting on this is the magnetic force. Why am I not putting the force of gravity in this free body diagram, Bob? Because it's negligible. It's negligible for? The electron. Right, for atomic particles with which it, the electron is an example. Uh, on the right hand side, what Rumkowski, is this the net force equal to? Mass times centripetal acceleration. Mass times centripetal acceleration. Good. Left-hand side, Lidrosian, what are we going to put for the magnetic force? What's the equation? Um, mm. um, there's two. Two? So which one? QVB sign. Why charge times velocity times a magnetic field times a sine of theta as opposed to the other one? We're trying to find the speed. Uh, well, more, more basic. I want to make sure we understand why we're not using ILB sine theta. Yeah, that one's for a wire. For a wire. That would be the current in the wire. This, is, this one's for a single charge, which is what we have here. On the right-hand side, we are going to substitute for centripetal acceleration. We have two different choices for what we're going to substitute for centripetal acceleration. What are we going to substitute and why, Cal? Um, Substituting for centripetal acceleration. Um. She's not seeing it. Who wants to help her out? We're trying to substitute for centripetal acceleration. Mr. Cole. Interestingly enough, it is not terminal velocity. Spiro. Tangential. Tangential velocity. We actually never use the term terminal velocity in this class, but it does exist. It is tangential velocity. What is the other equation we could have chosen? Yes. W. <laughs> See, we get to review so many things. What does W stand for, Miss Step? Omega. Omega. What is Omega? Spiro. The Greek letter. True. In this particular case, this Greek letter stands for what, Spiro? It stands for. Angular velocity. Angular velocity. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> Why are we not using the radius times the angular velocity squared? We're instead using the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. Shoot. Um, because we're looking for the velocity. Because of what we're looking for. If we were looking for the angular velocity, we would use that. So we're not actually going to use this equation. We're simply going to use the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. Bad. We can be equitable. We can take velocity from everyone. We get Q times B times sine of theta equals mass times tangent velocity divided by the radius. Theta. Let's substitute in for theta at this point just for fun. Theta. Cool. You kept the squared on it. Did I? Yeah, that's not good. I will remove it. Thank you, sir. You did. I crossed it off too. Came back. Not avoid. Jack, the theta is the angle between in charge times velocity times magnetic, magnetic field times the sine of theta. Theta is the angle between. Velocity and the magnetic field. The velocity and the magnetic field, the two things that have vectors in them class. That angle in this particular case is? 90, 90, 90 degrees. degrees. So we end up with charge times magnetic field equals mass times the tangential velocity divided by the radius. We're trying to find the speed, so we're going to solve for the tangential velocity. It's going to be Q times B times R divided by the mass. The charge times the magnetic field times the radius divided by the mass. We have all of this information. So the tangential velocity equals the charge on the electron is what we do? Um, negative 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19. 
times the magnetic field, which we got 470 times 10 to the negative 6, multiplied by the radius, 0 0.1, divided by the mass, uh, Wheatley again, um, an electron. 9.11 times Thank you. I was going to say that's faster than speed of light, which is not good. That's an awful big number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a couple things. One, it's a big number, right? The electron is moving very quickly. This is very common for the electrons to be moving very, very quickly. Should we really have a negative as our answer? No. no. So where did we go wrong? The charge of the electron is negative, but why aren't we going to put it in this equation? It's important to understand why we don't actually put it in this equation. Ellen? Um, well, because velocity is a vector, so that negative was the direction. Uh, no, it has to do, no, unfortunately not. Yes, I agree that would be a direction, but we don't really have one. Matt? Are we treating this, uh, in this equation the charge is scalar because the vectors are in velocity? Uh, it has to do with the, the fact that the, that negative indicates a direction. We've actually already indicated the direction. Where did we indicate the direction? Got something for me. Where did we indicate the direction? Cole. The sine of 90. Uh, no, the sine of 90 actually just had to do with the charge times velocity. That was just that equation right there. We, oh, we figured out the direction, of course. We used our right hand to figure out the direction. That included the negative. Remember, we had the velocity, the magnetic field, the force. We had to use that negative in order to figure out that the magnetic force was to the right. So we used that negative once. Once we've drawn our free body diagram, we've used the negative. We don't then use it again. Just like for um, the force of the spring equation equals negative kx, all of those. One, you only use the direction once. If you use it again, you're actually going to reverse the direction. 